Tim, sorry, Mr. Cook. I know, I know. The third event, it's untraditional. It's unorthodox. Uh, you're really gonna, you're gonna go through with it, though. I mean, send me an invite, man. I'd love to come help, help out. Okay, you enjoy, you enjoy being a billionaire now. Yeah. Don't have too much. Yeah, I know, I know. I'll talk to you later. What? Oh my gosh, are you serious? <laughs> So this is actually happening, which is weird, right? Because we've never seen an Apple November event like this before. I think we've probably gotten like one in the past, but generally they stick to September and October because the holiday quarter starts around the November timeframe and they wanna have every hardware product pushed out so people can buy them and uh, you know, stonks just go up. But is 2020 a normal year? Huh, no. No, I, I actually don't think 2020 is a normal year, man. So first up, when is this actually happening? Um, because we do have a date. Now again, Apple themselves has not confirmed this, but this information comes courtesy of John Prosser, who is 85% accurate. Uh, the dude got the past two Apple fall events leaked the dates before Apple announced them. So I feel pretty good about this one. We're hearing Tuesday, November 17th, and that makes sense. Apple held the previous two events this year on a Tuesday. It's not right when the work week starts on a Monday. Tuesday gives you plenty of time to disseminate the information, sit on it, and uh, for Apple to generate a lot of hype. So I'm full sending Tuesday, November 17th. Before even getting into what we expect at this event, let's just talk about what we're not getting. We are not getting AirPods Studio, Apple's over-ear headphones that are like up to $600 for the luxury edition. Those are not coming until March of next year. We thought they would make the cut in 2020, but apparently the over-ear headphones, AirPods Studio, have been delayed. So if you were excited for what you're looking at right now, these like near official renders uh, that have leaked, courtesy of John Prosser, these are not coming. Also not coming is a new Apple TV. We're hearing that that has also been pushed back until 2021. So no AirPods Studio, no Apple TV at this November event. What are we expecting to see? There are two things left for Apple to release this year that are big. We're talking about essentially two entirely new products. The first are Apple Macs with their own silicon inside, breaking from Intel, uh, basically rebuilding the internal architecture for these new computers. The second is AirTags, which are a tracking accessory. I wanna start off with AirTags because I have a very strong feeling that just like with the HomePod mini, even though it was the iPhone 12 event, the HomePod is what Apple led with. So I think they're going to lead with AirTags here. At this point, I am split on AirTags because what they are is going to be an Apple accessory that allows you to track your stuff. We're talking about like a little circular hockey puck you can put on your skateboard, you put on your backpack, you can throw it on your dog maybe. I wonder if, wait, okay, hear me out. Find your dog using Find My iPhone, you put it on their collar, and then it uses every single iPhone that exists in the universe to anonymously track your dog. Like if you, like this could actually be big, right? Like this could actually be huge because the problem with the lost dog is like, yeah, they might have a chip in them that you like take them into the vet. What if Find My Dog came out? Okay, moving on from the dog thing, Apple, <laughs> Just cut me the check for the idea. You're gonna be able to put these on anywhere and then track things in the Find My app. Now you're probably saying, okay, doesn't Tile do that? Isn't that literally the functionality of Tile already? Yes, it is. But Apple, of course, is not just announcing because this isn't how they are. And it's kind of annoying sometimes, but it's also pretty fun. They're gonna take it to the extreme. They're gonna take it to the max here. So design-wise, we're looking at something that looks like an Apple product. These are the leaked images courtesy of John Prosser uh, and concept creator. These are very, very similar to what the actual device is going to look like. It is small, it is tiny, but we learned from Love to Dream, who's like 90% accurate, that there are gonna be two different sizes. So Apple's gonna have a big air tag and a small AirTag. And there's been a lot of back and forth on how you're gonna charge these or if there will be a replaceable battery. Uh, it's gone back and forth. It looks like Apple's gonna be putting like a little CR, like circular metal battery in there and the battery will be replaceable on both models. Just like, you know, on Tile, you have to change the battery after so long because 
they're they're tiny, the battery can't last forever. So what like special features is Apple gonna use here? Well, they're, I almost certainly believe, going to harness the ecosystem that Apple has created, where, you know when you lose your like iPhone, if it gets close to like a Mac or something, Apple can find it because it's anonymously like searching for the lost device. I think Apple's gonna do that for these AirTags so that every iPhone in the wild is technically an anonymous iPhone searching for the product that you lost. And then when it comes into contact with one of this, these random iPhones, it'll send a signal, say it's these GPS coordinates, here's where you should look for your lost item. It's gonna be pretty sweet. But more so than that, which is already like, okay, that could actually be really useful. Apple's gonna have a huge set of augmented reality features, and it's gonna have to do with this special U1 spatial awareness chip. Apple's been putting this in the new iPhone, in the new HomePod. They're putting it in a lot of stuff. I think even the Apple Watch Series 6 has a U1 chip inside. And this chip is something that allows the devices to talk to each other and know exactly where they are. So like if my watch is here, it will be able to know through the U1 chip that my iPhone is, is just over here so many inches or millimeters away. So with augmented reality, this comes in because when you open the Find My app, you're gonna have this cool application where balloons will pop up around the room when you're looking for your thing. So let's say you have it on something that's sitting in your room. You're gonna be pointing the camera around and as you move, balloons in augmented reality will pop up and then you'll walk over to it and like the color of the balloon changes as you get closer. So rather than just that sound playing and you being like, where is it? I can't find it. Where? I need my tag. I can't. You know, you actually might be able to find your item uh, rationally without losing your mind. Uh, so augmented reality is gonna be big here. And of course, there's some other features that haven't leaked yet, but we've gotten the interface for what it's going to look like. Mac Rumors obtained these a while ago. Uh, it's going to be baked directly into the Find My app that exists already. And iOS 14.3, according to John Prosser, is what will enable this new functionality. So expect iOS 14.3, to also technically be announced at this event and probably come out soon after uh, on November 17th or November 18th. My honest thoughts though, I don't really care about them right now. Now listen, we've all said this for a product before where it's like we hear rumors and then we see it and everything changes, but this is a tracking accessory. Um, I don't see the vision for this yet. I don't see this be a big product. I certainly don't see this as something for the mainstream. I see this as something that people who like Apple are like, oh, I'm gonna buy these expensive little tracking accessories to track my stuff and it's cool. Maybe there's more coming that we don't know about, but for me, there's one thing that I care about this event. This event. Um, and it's not hard to pick between the two, but it is the first Mac with Apple Silicon inside. How do we know this is coming? Well, Apple has actually announced it and confirmed it themselves. At WWDC this year, they announced the first ever Apple ARM design processors, and they said the first Mac with Apple Silicon was coming before the end of the year. That's now. That's 2020. Really the big question for Apple Silicon, other than like, how fast is it? How is the battery life gonna be? Like one publication with a really sketchy track record said that potentially a MacBook would be able to get like 20 hours of battery life with Apple Silicon inside. Because you think about it, the standby time on iPhone is great. The optimization between hardware and software has always been on iOS. You know, the question is like, what's gonna happen when Apple brings this to the Mac? And right now, unfortunately, I wish I had more info. It is a lot of like, this could be insane. This could be really wild. Um, and really the only question that we have any answer for is about what models of the Mac that Apple Silicon is coming in first. And we know one for sure, the first one is going to be a MacBook of some kind. There is no consensus yet whether this first new MacBook with Apple Silicon will be a MacBook or a MacBook Air or a MacBook Pro. Some rumors and some sources are saying 100% it's going to be a new version of the 13.3 inch MacBook Pro. That sounds sort of realistic, except that in May, we got a new 13 inch MacBook Pro already, so I find it weird that Apple would double update this. What I think is more realistic is Apple not even touching the MacBook Air and potentially eliminating it, bringing back the OG. You guys remember the MacBook? No, 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 not the MacBook Pro, not the MacBook Air. And when I say MacBook, I hope you know that I mean MacBook, MacBook, the discontinued MacBook, the gold MacBook. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. And, and sources suggest that this could be Apple's way of reinventing the Mac, 
by not only bringing back a line that at its most simple form was just a Mac notebook. I mean, to me, it makes a lot of sense if we're doing completely new chip architecture in the Mac, why would you not put it in the simplest form of what a Mac can be? That's my thought. Those are my opinions, and there's some evidence in the rumor mill to suggest the same thing. Could be a 13.3 inch MacBook or something, but personally, I don't think the MacBook Pro line is gonna get Apple Silicon until next year in 2021. Now, the MacBook is like cool, and like I'm not like a small 12 inch kind of MacBook guy, but I'll, I'll get it because I wanna experience Apple Silicon. What about something more practical? I'm talking about an iMac, a desktop. Apple has been working for a while now, and this is because we've heard it from so many different sources, a redesigned iMac. I'm not talking about this with a new processor, because that's what they gave us in August, was a new version of the 27 inch with Intel inside, and I was so disappointed that it wasn't revamped. I'm talking about an iPad Pro-like design, similar to the new iPhone 12s. Edge to edge display, potentially new colors, a larger screen on both the, the 21 and 27 inch models. Uh, so the first one of these could be a 23 inch version. We do not expect a redesigned version of the 27 inch iMac to come out in 2020. That is almost certainly coming out next year or even the year after that. So what is it that makes me believe more than not that there's a good chance we see this new iMac? Well, when Apple updated the iMacs earlier this year, they only touched one of the models. They touched the 27 inch version. 21.5 inch version did not get an upgrade. I mean, it got a solid state hard drive by default, but I don't really count that as an upgrade. Like that's been available forever. So if Apple skipped it in August and they said, okay, we're not gonna update the 21.5 inch version, I do not see a world where we get a new Intel version of that computer, but I think that that is a decent seller for Apple, like especially in schools or people that don't wanna spend as much on a 27 inch version. So that's where this new 23 inch version comes in. Redesign, edge to edge, all screen. Uh, and it's gonna be insane, I think. I could very well see Apple announcing a MacBook and a reinvented version of the iMac at this November event. Confirmed by pretty much every source is at least some new Mac notebook. But I think it's plausible that Apple could introduce a new smaller version of the iMac as well. And I mean, I would be really excited to see that. Like this redesigned iMac has been rumored for such a long time now. And uh, I'm ready to get my I'm ready to get my hands on. That's what we're expecting to see at this event: one potentially two new Silicon Macs and AirTags. That's it. My only question, and I tweeted about this today, was about a one more thing. Initially, months ago, we had heard that Apple would do a a one more thing at like their September event. This is before the pandemic got really bad, and it potentially would be like one of their big unknown products, like an Apple AR VR headset or Apple Glass, which are like Apple augmented reality glasses, or you know, the car is still probably like 50,000 years away. But we haven't gotten a one more thing actually since September of 2017 at the iPhone 10 event. The iPhone 10 was a one more thing for Apple. And we haven't gotten one in three years now, over three years at this point. So will we see some wild other announcement from Apple? I don't know. We, we don't have any hard indication that that's the case, but I mean, three years and no one more thing? I feel like it's time for Apple to unveil something pretty wild. And potentially at this November sort of wrapping up 2020 event, we see something that we've never seen before. But even if we don't see that, I think the new Silicon Macs are going to be enough to satiate pretty much everybody. That's uh, it's less than a month away now, and we're already talking about the next Apple event. Listen, as much as it was weird to break these events up and have one in September and October and November, I kinda like this nonstop hype train. It's pretty fun. I'm having a good time. Drop a train emoji and a choo-choo down below if you're having fun as well. All right, that's all. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Peace out, I'll see you in my next video.